Quentin had its first sabbatical from the University of Calgary in 1967. We lived in London for a year. And I had a small travel grant from the Canada Council to go to places that had um, avant-garde theater, uh, theater for children. I think that was... I, I wanted to visit... Oh, and I wanted to go to the Berliner Ensemble. So I, I went to uh, Poland and Czechoslovakia and Russia. And when I went to Russia, I came upon this organization. They were having a festival, and so there was a world organization called ASETEJ, which is the French um, acronym for the Association of Theatre for Children and Youth for the World. And um, I saw this table with flags, and there was a Canadian flag and an empty chair. So I went up and I said, I'm from Canada. And they said, well, you have to be nominated by an organization in your country and so forth. But I managed to, you know, I, I was in several organizations. And I told them about it. And um, eventually I got to be Canada's representative to this international organization. And that was such an eye opener. You know, it was just what they're do what they were doing in some countries, especially countries in the Eastern Bloc, like Russia had 50 state subsidized children's theaters with sometimes a repertoire of 24 plays and their own orchestra. It just it was mind boggling for somebody you know who's seen four actors in a gym with a couple sheets you know, yeah. <laughs> doing, doing plays yeah. for kids. So I worked hard for to legitimatize work for in theater for children. And there were other people doing that in the country as well. And one time I got a call from Linda Gaborio when she was working at the Canada Council and she said that they realized that theater for children in funding had fallen between stools. The schools said, oh, that's arts. And the arts group said, oh, that's schools. So, it, as a, so they weren't being funded. So they were vaguely, you know, they were not really considered professional by many people. This is theater for children or theater for with children? For children, for children, by professional actors. And that's what Asetej is. It has, it, it has nothing to do with the education part. It just it was people who devoted their lives to acting for children in many European countries. So uh, the Canada Council, we met in, um, in Vancouver. And we, it was Ken, Kramer, Ken and Sue Kramer from the Globe Theater. And I forget who else was there, but I remember them. And, you know, we made a report and we recommended that Theater for Children be funded by the Canada Council. And that was a big, that was a big step. And what did they say? No, they did, finally. You know, they do now. So that was good. But it took a lot, it took a long time. Okay, so 50 companies in Russia? Mm -hmm. Just for, just for theater for children. So in this or Asetage organization, did you go you went, to a variety yeah, of you, you, you had meetings. <laughs> if you were on the executive, I, I, I got to be a, one of the vice presidents. Then you went, you went twice a year to executive meetings. And then every three years there was a big world festival. So in 72, the festival was uh, partly in Montreal and partly in Albany, New York. And uh, so I spent three years of my life you know, on that festival. And uh, it was a big job. And of course, nobody thought somebody with only one language from Calgary was particularly qualified to do this thing. And so how was it? What it was you... fine. It worked fine. There were 500 delegates and 14 you know, countries represented with plays. And, and uh, we featured uh, uh, some Quebec companies. And uh, that Asetej Congress in 72 in Montreal, there were people there in Canada and they were in, from the West and they were inspired to, to do the first uh, Vancouver International Children's Festival. Mm -hmm. So then after the Vancouver International Children's Festival, they began to have festivals for children across the country and they still do. I'm always struck by how some little thing, you know, some small thing, like I was lucky enough to be in Russia, I was lucky enough to see the flag, you know, and, and it did lead to something, 
because a lot of people worked hard for it. But it wouldn't have come here. Well, it probably would have eventually, but, but you know, it's just funny how a little thing like that will make such a difference. And of course it makes a huge difference if you get a grant from the Canada Council. Even if they aren't very big, it's something, it's, it's almost like a, a stamp of approval. When was that though? You know, I, do, I really can't remember. I think it was in, I think it was in the early 70s. It was around the time of opportunities for youth and, and that, that made such a difference here. ATP is here because of the um, LIP. Lip grants. Yeah, the lip grants. That's how they started. So artists are very good at, if you put a little pile of money in the middle of the room <laughs> and then you have funny th reasons that you can get it, you know, an artist, not just theater artists, but visual artists and musicians, and they will find a way, if they possibly can, to get at that. They're very flexible and inventive. Uh, how much more, I mean, that was a really special time, wasn't it? When things were being created, the theater in this country was, yeah. uh, was between discovering si Yeah, itself. between 67 and 75 was very exciting. And I feel so glad that you know, I was, I had a little finger in, in it, you know, it was great. It was, it was that way at the universities too, because all those universities were established, you know, in the 60s. And because Canada was a, a small country, they didn't have enough people to staff them. So people came from all over the world. And we were influenced by... Yeah, I think both the people who came and, and the people who were here, it was a very good thing to happen. So you came here in 1960, um, when the theatre was, as you described, provincial, uh, British influence. And you came up with an interest in Albi and European playwrights like UNESCO and Beckett. And what about the time when Canadian expression changed, when we started oh, to say we're going to do our oh, own? Oh yeah, well that was, I think 67 was crucial because there was a lot, there were, there were a lot of grants in 67 and a lot of companies wanted to do plays about Canada and, and Canadian history. And I think it was great. Are you talking about like Theatre Pass Mariah? Yeah, Toronto? And, and ATP was founded as a as a company that did his. They founded it to do historical plays based on history on Canadian history for kids at the Canmore Opera House in in Heritage Park. What were they? Well, well they were Patty what? Patty what? Campbell wrote some, and um, I'm trying to think who else wrote them. All the authors. Uh, that were in the West after a while would, would write for ATP. Well, as Sharon wrote, Sharon wrote children's plays for them. And John Morrell wrote children's plays for them. If, you know, it was, one, it was another way that you could get your stuff done. I, I wrote a book about theater for children in Canada, and when I was doing that, I made it a point to go as, to, as much, to as many places in the country as I possibly could. What's the book? It's called A Mirror of Our Dreams, Children and the Theatre in Canada. It's, it's, it was published in 1972 or four, so it's out of print now. But nobody else has written another one. I took four companies, uh, Young People's Theatre, ATP, Mermaid Theatre, and now I'm not going to be able to remember the other one. Um, and I wrote it with, with my friend Zena Barnier, and uh, we took those four four companies as being um, examples of different kinds of style. Of They they did different styles of theater because mm -hmm. uh, Susan Rubish's were more conventional and ATP was history plays and Mermaid was puppets and um, oh, maybe I'll remember but I can't remember the fourth one right now. And then we had a chapter on the Quebec Theater for Children and Hélène Beauchamp wrote that. Because they, they were way, you know what, when we moved here, the French Canadian theater was way ahead of the English theater because they were professional. Mm -hmm. And when they would come through, like Les Jeunes Comédiennes came through with Moliere plays, I was just blown away. In French? Yeah. They were terrific. 